All right, in this video, we will talk about the analog write property in the Arduino. So uh, here's the Arduino. Uh, here on the top, we have digital pins. Here we saw and used the analog pins, and we've used this particular port for power right here. So in the last couple of uh, examples we've done, we've basically use analog pins to read in the analog value and we saw analog read uh, as well as the analog reference function now let's talk about analog write to do analog write the arduino is set up such that the digital pins for example all the digital pins that have this tiny tilde associated with it for example 9 10 11 6 5 and 3 so these six pins right here can be used to do an analog write value uh, the arduino produces analog value based on a concept called pulse width modulation so imagine a waveform of this sort so here is zero volts and it stays zero volts forever so imagine this portion of the waveform right here zero volts 100 percent of the time now if zero per volt 100 percent of the time then the analog value associated with this signal is zero volts as well so it's not terribly exciting the digital pin let's say was five volts for a small amount of time one fourth the time and zero for another uh three fourth of the time so it's one fourth of the time it's five volts and three-fourths of the time, that's zero volts. We call that 25% duty cycle. Here is an example of a digital pin that's staying five volts for 50% of the time, half of the time, and zero volts for the remaining half. Uh, we call this a 50% duty cycle. And here is an example of a waveform that's staying high for three-fourths of a time, in other words, 75% of the time and stays low for 25% of the time. This particular example, so this green bars are a particular representation of a single period of a waveform. So this waveform repeats itself. So here's a periodic waveform. So in this one period, if you look at one period of the waveform, in this case, you see that it stays at five volts for 0% of the time. So it's 0% duty cycle. Here you see that it stays high for 25% of the duty cycle. Here you see that it stays high for 50% of the time, so it's called 50% duty cycle. Here you say here it stays high for 75%, so it's called 75% duty cycle. And here it stays high for 100% of the time. Now let's take a look at the 0% and the 5% time. So 0% of the time during this period, it's always zero. So the average analog voltage value here is equal to zero volts. That's easy to say. Let's look at look at this case right here with 100% duty cycle where it always stays at five volts. So in other words, the average value here is five volts as well. So that's easy to say. Now here in this case, let's talk about the 50% time. 50% of the time, it stays high. 50% of the time, it's staying low. So if I think about the average value during this total time period from here to here, if I say, what is the average voltage at this time? I see 50% of the time it was five volts, 50% of the time it was zero volts. So the average value is in fact somewhere here at about 2.5 volts. Okay, so that's the average value. Similarly, if I look at this waveform, I see it stays high for 25% of the time and stays low for 75% of the time. So if I actually calculate the average value, the average value is right around here at about 1.25 volts. So imagine this on the Arduino. So here are my digital pins. So these pins that are especially marked with a the tilde, these guys, and up here are three more pins. These, if we produce a waveform similar to this, we get zero volts. If we produce a waveform similar to this, we get five volts. And we've been doing that when we did digital write 
high or digital right low before. This is equivalent to digital right high. This is equivalent to digital right low. What if I wanted a 1.25 volt output, analog voltage output, instead of a 5 volt output? We could create a waveform that stays high for a certain amount of time and then low for an extended period of time. That is called pulse width modulation. By changing the width of the pulse, look at this, by setting the width of the pulse to 25%, setting the width of the pulse to 50%, or setting the width of the pulse to 75%, and any number in between these guys, we can change the average value that a that we see coming out of a digital pin so that concept is called pulse width modulation in the arduino these digital pins when this is set up set up for pulse width modulation they have a period equivalent to 490 hertz or approximately about 500 hertz so this is about 500 hertz frequency okay and we set these 0%, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100% duty cycle by assigning a value to an analog write function. So the way analog write works is we say analog write one of these pins that have a tilde in it. So for example, analog write 11. And on that, if I wanted a 50% duty cycle, I would write a number between 0 and 255. 255 corresponds to 100%. 0 correspond to 0%. So if I wanted 50%, I would write 127. So if I wrote 127 on analog write, what I should see here is a 50% duty cycle. Okay. So that is the concept of analog write uh, in the case of, uh, of the Arduino. So analog write is basically generating a square wave. And it is basically producing an average analog value that can be used to control certain things. And that certain thing, for example, could be dimming a light bulb, or changing the speed of a motor, or communicating certain data out of a Arduino pin. In our case, uh, we will basically be, let's take an example and first look at dimming a LED. So let me get that set up on Tinkercad and we will continue with our video in just one second. All right, so here I have a circuit that I created in Tinkercad. And what I have done is basically connected an LED. So it looks a little messy right now, but let's uh, see, let's analyze this circuit. So here coming out of pin 11 through a resistor is a simple LED going down to ground. So I could do digital right, digital uh, or uh, to just turn on the LED. In this case, I want to fade this LED. So I want to provide a different uh, power and see what happens. Uh, similarly, I have hooked up to the exact same pin. I want to see what the analog voltage is okay, on that particular pin that's also controlling the LED. So I connected a voltmeter. And for those of you who want to geek out a little more, I also connected a, uh, I also connected a, I also connected an oscilloscope right here, oscope right here. And what I, what we should be able to do is see a pulse width modulated signal there uh, as we uh, do run some of these experiments. So let's set up our code. So in my code, what I did was the following. So I, ha I am doing a basically, so no, nothing required in void setup, analog write does not require a pin uh, mode to be declared as an input or an output. Analog write assumes already that the pin is going to be an output. So we don't need to specify that in the setup. The setup is basically empty in this particular case. And what I've done is basically written analog write pin 11 zero. So remember, zero basically meant 0% 0 of the duty cycle. Okay. And then another one, it says analog write 11, 31. So which basically is, so the, so if you recall, analog write works with specifying the pin number and the value that's between 0 and 255 right there. So analog write is, analog write is basically pin number and the value between and that value, value is between 0 to 255, okay? So 31 is about 12.5% of 255. 
63 is 25% of 255, so I'm setting that up for a second uh, right here as well. And then I set up 150% uh, of the duty cycle, and then I slowly go up. So if the pulse with modulated signal, so if right here, if I calculate the analog value equivalent to this, it should be zero volts. Uh, it should be equal to about 12.5% of 5 volts. This should be about 25% of 5 volts. This should be 2.5 volts. So I should start seeing my LED go brighter and brighter and brighter. So that's the that's what this code is doing. So if I run this simulation, so let's see. So I start out at 0 volts and you focus on this portion for now. And the multimeter is rising up slowly every second. And it is going up closer and closer and closer to uh, 5 volts is what's happening. So it went up and it went back down. Right? Similar now focus on this LED. As the voltage value goes up, look at this go brighter and change its brightness. So after a while, the brightness, it's hard to decide. see. It. So let me zoom in just on this portion for now. So now it's off and it's getting brighter. It's getting brighter. It's getting brighter. And then right around 2 volts, 2.5 volts, volts, it's hard to tell uh, much of a difference uh, again. Okay, so that's the analog voltage. That's the brightness of the LED changing based on analog right. And I also connected the, an oscilloscope. I also connected an oscilloscope to the exact same pin. And what we see, look at this. Every second, this duty cycle gets bigger and bigger as this volt average value goes larger. So you can see that the average value is getting bigger. The that voltmeter is reading the average value. This is showing the actual digital pulse that I'm applying. So here you go. So this is a really small uh, percentage, and then we have 25%. Uh, that's getting close to about 120% or, uh, or number. This is a close 50% uh, value, and and so forth. So you see that changing the width changes the average value, and in turn changes the brightness. So analog right in actually is doing this but this when uh, averaged out produces an average voltage value which can then be used to change the dim light or run the motor at a different speed and so forth so that is basically analog right